Last of Us was all about trying to put the player as much as possible into that grounded reality of Joel and Ellie as a survivor in that world. And we really constrained ourselves on design, art, etc. And then Uncharted coming back to us like, oh man, cool, I can like jump. <laughs> like... I remember on, on Uncharted 2, we like kind of just started figuring out set pieces and how to get set pieces on the stick. So you're really playing through a collapsing building or a sliding platform or fighting a helicopter. And then, you know, moving on to The Last of Us, we were kind of really uh, concerned with how do we take those set pieces, make it more intimate, make them really parallel the story and the character arcs. And now coming back to Uncharted, it's like, okay, we can go epic again, we can go big, but we're really challenging ourselves, like, again, how do we mirror the character arc? So we're taking what we've learned from Uncharted 2, evolved it to The Last of Us, and bringing it back, but we're still keeping that pacing in the roller coaster, but at the same time, it has to be driven by what's happening with the characters at that moment. I don't really have an option here. You know that. Yeah, maybe you're right. I've been out of the game, but I need back in. The Last of Us, we went to great lengths to try to create this reality, but we were still limited by the amount of overdraw the PS3 could handle, etc. And now the PS4 is allowing us to push so much more density. So it's fun to go back and go like, oh, look at the things we wished we could have done in Uncharted 1. It's just like, oh, this is easy. Like, let's just make this. So it's nice to be able to explore something and look back and go, wow, this is like, remember when we couldn't do any of this? It's kind of neat. From a character standpoint, the tech really allowed us to get more subtlety. And you're seeing hints of that, you know, in the trailer, how much we could show pain or grimaces or, you know, it's a subtle touch, but like as he raises his eyebrows, you know, like the, the color of your skin changes as the blood flows away from that compression. And all those things just let a realistic character become much more grounded, much more believable. Gameplay-wise, we're just going deeper and richer with all the mechanics. It's still going to be a roller coaster ride. It's still going to have that pacing. We still want you on the edge of your, sh your seat, but at the same time, we want to make sure that you as players, I as a player, want to play this thing and feel invested. And we want to make sure we have that with the epic, with the pacing, with the characters that we're known for. And our motto in Uncharted 2 was always keep it core. No matter how big the set yeah. piece gets, keep it on the control stick, keep the core system. So taking that into Uncharted 4 is like, Okay, knowing we want to keep it core, how do we expand Nate's core moveset? How do we build more systems that will give the player more options, more ways to kind of approach, whether it's exploration, traversal, or combat, you're going to have more ways to um, attack those things. Ultimately, I think it, it will come down to how good is the gameplay, how good is the story, because without that, you know, you can have all the graphicals, bells and whistles, and it doesn't matter. But if you have that really strong foundation, those things can really help you take over the top and really get you immersed in this journey. From Uncharted 1 all the way through 4, each journey dovetails into the next. So we've taken that chronology and the storylines and, and the relationships and just kind of evolved them into this next journey. And you can see he's got a little bit of gray feathering inside of his hair now got the, the crow's feet sort of around the eye, like I have. You know, it's like we're all aging with Nathan Drake. So can I count on you? PlayStation.